He should have had a hat trick. He's got to do better there. He's got to score. These are the sort of things you'll hear commentators and fans say every week. But how true are they? Well, it's been very hard to tell until the expected goals metric was created. But what is it? Expected goals is a measure of chance quality. Optra have analysed over 300,000 shots to calculate the likelihood of a shot being scored from a particular position on the pitch during a particular phase of play. The model takes into account several variables and looks at how these affect the chance of a specific shot going in. Each shot has an expected goals value, which is the percentage chance of that shot resulting in a goal. Take this Pedro opportunity. He's put through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. He's in the box and close to the goal, but the angle is quite narrow. Pulling all these factors together means that Pedro is likely to score with this chance about 35% of the time, or 0.35 xG. This means a player would score around one in three chances in this situation. Lamine Kone's goal here against Everton is a great example of a shot with a high xG value. Kazri crosses the ball in, it deflects to Kone, who tucks it away from one yard out. Considering all these factors and that it's an opt to defined big chance means that the XG value is 0.91. In other words, he'd score 91% of the time given this opportunity. This shot by Emre Chan is a perfect example of where the scoring probability was low. The ball falls to the German and he decides to shoot from outside the box and to the right of the goal. Given the distance and the acute angle, a chance of this quality is scored only around 2% of the time. In other words, once for every 50 shots attempted. Adding up a team or player's expected goals can give us an indication of how many goals they should have scored on average from their chances. Clubs have been using this for the past couple of years and it's gradually working its way into the media. So, what does it show us? Well, here we have the Premier League XG leaderboard for the 2015-16 season. Jamie Vardy had his best scoring return in the Leicester's sensational title winning season. His total of 19 non-penalty goals helped the Foxes win the league, but his total expected goals value was 18.3. In other words, he was finishing high quality chances at a rate we'd expect given the opportunities he had. Vardy's conversion rate was 19%, very similar to Sergio Aguero's at 18%, but Aguero is widely recognised as one of the best finishers in the Premier League. His total of 20 non-penalty goals came from chances worth 14.8 xG. That means he was converting more difficult opportunities and scored roughly five more than would be expected of the average player. Juventus's 2015-16 season is a great example of where we can see a side's underlying performance compared to their actual results. Juve started the season slowly, winning only three of their opening 10 games, but the expected goal difference tells a different story. Their results in this period were worse than their performances suggested. They scored 11 when you'd expected them to score around 19 based on the chances they created, and they let in nine when you'd expect them to only let in five. To the naked eye, they were struggling, but XG was identifying a team who would surely improve soon. Lo and behold, around match day 12, their fortunes changed, with the team starting to score and concede at and above the expected rate. This led to the team performing better than the expected goal difference said they should have in their eventual stroll to the title.